Bruch HaMavoyim. Thank you very much for attending. Welcome to our home. Tonight, we're going to begin um, the class with something called Nothing is an Accident 2. I had to think I had already done an, a lecture on Nothing is an Accident. So this is, again, something in the same line. So the topic of my thought tonight, Nothing is an Accident 2. In our daily lives, uh, there are experience incidents that occur, and we really wonder, why did God want me to participate in that incident? More often than not, the question just goes unanswered. It becomes more of a picture, a moment in time, rather than a full-length movie. However, there are rare moments, rare moments when God, so to speak, pulls back the curtain and allows us to see not just the event, but the reason behind it, why he orchestrated events in our lives in the precise manner that they occurred. Nothing is, a, is coincidental. We read in the Amida, in the standing prayer three times daily, in the prayer, Modim Anach Nulach, I thank you. The words, No Delacha Unasaper Tehilasacha, translate, I thank you, and I will tell others about your praises. It's not enough for us to thank God in our heart for all of the kindnesses that He performs for our benefit. We really need to tell others as well about all the many blessings that God constantly bestows upon us. So this is a true story that happened to me recently. I felt that it was something that I should relate to others so that we can all appreciate that God our Father is always looking out for us, even when we are not aware of his presence and guiding hand. I have a dear friend and student who is a sweet and generous person. A month before the holiday of Passover, Pesach, he sent me a text with an unusual request. He said that he had remembered a story that I had told him a while ago about taking our rabbi to a uh, kapata store. Now, a kapata is the traditional long black coat that you see many ultra-Orthodox Jews wearing. I had told the rabbi that I wanted to buy a kapata for myself. Well, <laughs> he was thrilled. So we went to the kapata store, and we entered the store. I told the proprietor to fit the rabbi with my kapata. So based on this story that I had told him, my dear friend and student sent me a text that read, I've been thinking about this for a long time, and I later found out that he had actually been thinking about it, doing this for three years. So he said that the last thing that he wanted to do was to hurt my feelings, but he wondered if he could take me to a men's store and buy me a brand new suit for the upcoming holiday. He added, this is one of those gifts that I'm getting for myself, of course, that you told me about. Again, referring to my story with the rabbi. God Almighty has been very kind to me and has bestowed many blessings in my life. Thanks to his generosity, I have the ability to buy myself most anything that I want. My dear friend, is well aware of this fact, but still, it was a kindness that he felt he wanted to extend to me. I, I was very touched, but at the same time, you know, I felt a little bit uncomfortable. As a child, I grew up very poor. We lived off of welfare. We had very little, and the clothes that I wore attested to my state of poverty. The first decent clothing that I owned were given to me as a gift. I was taken to a large, beautiful home where a 13-year-old boy had just passed away. His grieving parents were giving away his clothing. I have to admit that it was a sweet sorrow receiving his clothing. On the one hand, it was really very sad to be in the house and see the parents. On the other hand, the clothes were much nicer than anything I had ever owned before. Poverty was no fun. I remember being in school and they had a charity drive. They posted a board with the name of everyone in the class. The board recorded how much each student donated. The student who donated the most had their name on the top of the list. My name? Hmm. My name was on the bottom. I remember speaking to God and telling him, make me rich and, I, and then my name will be on the top. He listened and I've made it a point of trying to keep my word. The reason I'm mentioning this fact is to say that accepting charity is not something that I will ever do again. I've been there and done it, and I don't ever want to go back. So when this generous friend of mine asked to buy me a suit, 
I was agonizing over my re what my response should be. You know, at first I thought maybe I should suggest that he buy a suit for the rabbi or some other individual in our synagogue. But then I thought to myself, who knows? He may well have done so already. But, and that it really wasn't my place to suggest to him who he should give gifts to. I also thought that he is well aware of the fact that I can easily afford to buy a suit for myself. But upon reflecting on the scenario, I came to the conclusion that sometimes giving to others means letting them do something for you. So I agreed to allow him to buy me a suit for the upcoming holiday. Well, he was more than thrilled. He picked me up and took me to an expensive men's store. He had already called the store and told the salesperson to select special suits for me to try on. Being the sweet and generous person that he is, he had said suit, singular. However, once we were in the store, I realized he had meant a new suit for each day of the two-day holiday. And of course, there were the shirts and ties that were also a part of his gift. The clothes were beautiful and expensive. He kept repeating to me over and over again, and don't look at the price tags. Well, I was more than pleased, but not just because of the clothing. I looked over at him as he watched me trying on the suits. Basically, he was actually happier than I was. His face was beaming. It was truly heartwarming. I was glad that I had decided to allow him to show me such kindness. I was certain that I had made the right decision. Well, the story should really have ended here. I wore the suits on the holiday and many people commented on just how sharp I looked. But the story continues. The first morning of the holiday I was talking to a friend before services began. He commented on how he really liked my suit. It happens that he wears expensive suits himself and he noticed that my suit was an Armani. So just in casual conversation, he mentioned that most of his expensive suits had shotness. Shotness is a mixture of wool and linen, which the Torah forbids a Jew from wearing together in a garment. Suddenly, hmm, I realized that somehow I had forgotten to have my, new, my two new suits checked for shotness. Uh, this was very strange for me. After all, I take all my religious obligations seriously. However, the holiday had already begun and there was really nothing I could do about it then. I decided that since I wasn't certain that my suits contained shotness, I would wear them and get them checked after the holiday. I felt that making another person feel good, which was a certainty, would outweigh the possibility that I was wearing shotness, which was only an uncertainty. When my friend saw me in my new suit, well, he was overjoyed. He looked and acted like a proud father. He looked me over from head to toe and approved of my blue shoes and my blue hat that I wore to compliment my new blue suit. He laughed and then we hugged. And I thanked him once again for his expensive and thoughtful gift. As happy as I was, it was nothing compared to the joy on his face. I felt that I had done the right thing, but I was still concerned that the suits might contain shotness. So the very next day after the holiday, I took the suits to the shotness man. Sure enough, both of my wool suits had linen in the collar. As I was driving home, I reviewed the whole scenario in my mind. I wasn't sure what to say to my friend, if anything. I was concerned that he would feel bad that my suits had shotness. And the last thing I wanted to do was hurt his feelings. But the more I thought about it, the more I wondered whether he knew about the law of shotness at all. So I decided that I would call him and let him know. I thought that if he knew that his suits had shotness, he would probably have mentioned something to me, but he hadn't. And so I thought that I should mention it to him, even on a maybe. When I called him, he was deeply concerned. He thought that I would never be able to wear the suits again. I assured him that the linen had already been removed and that I was on my way to my tailor to restitch the collar. I told him that once the shotness was removed, the suits would be fine. He seemed to know something about the prohibition of woolen linen, but somehow it wasn't quite clear in that then he had just overlooked it. I understood completely. Checking my suits 
was one of the last issues that I had dealt with when I became observant. Once again, he mentioned that he had thought of buying me the suits for three years. He just didn't know how I would react to his gesture. It's interesting. Now everything started to become very clear. All the pieces were coming together. I told him, wow, see how much God loves you. For the last three years, God has been trying to get you to check your suits so that you would not transgress the prohibition of wool and linen. You didn't act the first year on his suggestion. So what did he do? He inspired you again the second year. But you still didn't act. So God is our loving Father, never gives up. And so he inspired you again this year, and you finally acted. I told my friend that I believe that God Almighty loves you dearly. And well, he should. This friend and student of mine is a true diamond, a prince amongst men. He is generous to a fault. His life is dedicated not only to his family, but also to helping other people in so many different arenas and in so many different ways. A truly unique individual. With all the many mitzvot that he possesses, God Almighty, like any loving father, regardless of how good we are, still wants us to be the best child that we can be. And so to achieve that end, he creates certain scenarios to guide us on our path in life. He does so in the hope that we can continue to grow and that we can be even better in the future than we were in the past. Once again, I thank God for allowing me to be a participant in his glorious and benevolent ways. As a closing thought, I felt it was necessary to say that we as Jews believe that you cannot do a good deed, a mitzvah, through a sin, an avera. Robin Hood is not a Jewish religious concept. You can't steal from the rich and give to the poor and then call it a mitzvah. So I still have to deal with the fact that I wore shotness. And for that, I ask my dear Father in heaven to forgive me it is my hope that in the future I will be more diligent in my observance of his mitzvot. Let me end with a word of gratitude to our Father in heaven, who from time to time allows us to follow his kindness from beginning to end. I hope you have found this story an inspiration. I know that I certainly did. And with that, let us hope that the special mitzvah of loving another person will help to usher in the coming of Mashiach Sukkanu quickly and in our time. Again, thank you very much for attending, for listening. Again, I hope you found the story as inspiring as I did and an eye-opener that God is always in attendance. Thank God. <laughs> Anyways, have a great week, good Shabbos, and God should bless you with safety, health, and all that is good. Thank you again for attending.